What's up everybody? On the seventh day of Christmas, Santa drove me over to Don Osborne's dining room and gave to me winter lager from our Headless Mombi. From Headless Mombi on the seventh day of Christmas. My brew love gave to me a winter lager from Headless Mombi. Hey, that was pretty good. So our boy Keith, his boy Alex, their gal Stacy, they're still brewing strong in Olympia, Washington. Headless Mumby, just a little bit older than a year old. You've seen a flight of their beers in a past episode. You've seen Keith as a home brewer in past episodes. So uh, I believe this is the strongest beer they brewed. I might be talking out of turn, but it's a 9%. And in the notes that he sent me, it said, maxed out the mash time. So I have a feeling this might be the biggest beer they've ever brewed. Cheers, brother. Cheers. They are an all lager brewery. They use all whole leaf hops, and they're keeping it real. They've been getting some accolades in year one, so we're really happy that they sent this along. So he calls this a Doppelbach finish with a bunch of Chinook. It's mainly pills, some amber malt, which you don't hear thrown out there a lot, Kara Munich, Vienna, roasted rye, which you also don't hear thrown out there a lot, which I don't even know what roasted rye is, but it's only 1%. That's a good point. Is that home roasted? Brewery roasted? I can't say for sure, but I no. wouldn't think so. No, probably not. And then first wort, hot pearl, 30 pearl, five bunch of Chinook, house lager strain. Um, OG looks like it was 1080, maybe. Mexican lager. Yeah. Which is a particular type of lager yeast that I've never e used. Would that yeah. be what you'd use in your Dos Equis? It would be, or, or like your, spe your Pacifica, or um, those uh, cervezas. Yes, it's for, I think its main thing is like the idea is those Vienna lagers, those Mexican lagers that have that amber. Mm -hmm. But okay. Keith makes it sound like it's their house strain, so it goes to their German pills and their American pills and their oh. rye roasted, or their smoked rye lager. So I that's see. pretty, Okay. this is a beer I would expect it in. Partly right. because of the sweetness, kind the graininess, the red, the, the richness. Lager. The fun part about this beer is we've informally, Keith and I, have been calling this the Yule Steiner Winter Lager in tribute to our favorite beer-related and brewery-related piece of holiday decor. We both have these in our house. Uh, I bought mine at Menards in Minnesota, and it's just this awesome, cute brewery. It's got, like gnomes and humans working together on bottling and kegging lines are running a little QC down on the bottling line to make sure there's not too much dissolved oxygen. There's some guys running like a tasting table outside. They're playing the alpine horn or the alphorn that you would see in the Ricola commercial. Alphorn? Or alphorn. Alphorn. Yeah, and there's some guys like with some really unstable kegs off to the side of the building and a, a great like pouring beer, kind of like the old ham sign uh, that says Yule Steiner. So it's not the official name and Keith was like, no, it's called Winter Lager, but you can informally refer to it as Yule Steiner. It was definitely an influence on this beer. I have an overall flavor I get is the, kind of the caramel sweetness mm -hmm. from the Vienna. And I suppose also equal parts of Kara Munich, mm -hmm. which would, well, there you go, Munich. I mean, Munich and Vienna, so 18%. That's giving you a almost a Oktoberfesty kind of character. Definitely. Doppelbach, uh, interesting. It's a sweet beer, but I feel like those are more chewy ish sometimes. Not like, I wonder what the final gravity is on this, because it's drinking. Um, not like it's a high final gravity, you know, no. not like it's dry. If the OG was 20 and it's 9%, I would think it's in the teens. I suppose a Maybe person could do some calculations to figure it out. So but much math on the seventh day of Christmas, dude. No one gave us a calculator. On the seventh day, we rested from math. Um, but I'm willing to bet, yeah, teens or lower. Uh, it, I think it definitely has that Doppelbach caramely, chewy dark but clean bread not like a yeasty like an english yeast would do mm -hmm. to a dark beer but you definitely get that it's something else besides like a clean german kind of hop like the chinook to me definitely stands out to, in the flavor i was trying to get specifically the, um, i don't know how the i don't know how crawling a beer affects the aroma i know when i package beer 
to take to a friend's house and you get there and you pour it out, it's not quite the same as it is mm. right from the tap. Mm -hmm. The one of the things that seems to go is the aroma. So I don't know if that's somewhat true with something like this mm. or not. Um, if it was intentionally dosed with Chinook at the end, now that also could give it flavor. You're yeah. saying that you think you're getting I feel sort like of an American hop mm -hmm. bitterness of a flavor or flavor. And it's that like really crisp American hop too, that kind of, not piney, but um, maybe like that. I mean, it's a sea hop, so it's kind of giving, I mean, think kind of, of like celebration, that crisp, that's a bitter biting part of the hot. Well, yeah, but they're using That's way more bitter, bitter hops bitter on the animal. front side. Right, right, and the pearl is probably not. It's probably contributing a restrained bitterness and flavor. I don't know if you'd say it's a flavor, but there's a character from the alcohol. I don't know if it's a flavor of the alcohol, but I think that the bitterness, maybe just in the sense of the effect of some kind of strength of. The beer is maybe from that as well, because of the. It doesn't hide the <laughs> it's alcohol. It's definitely boozy. Like, like I'm feeling it you under can, my you can my headless mumby beanie already. I'm like, ooh. You hey can drink a nine percent alcohol stout sometime, and you're just like glig glig glig, and <laughs> you don't notice it. But I think the content of the malt makeup, which thankfully does have a nice malty character to it, mm -hmm. um, it isn't like a 9% beer made with adjuncts, pale beer with, you know, yeah. like big boozy alcohol thing. I mean, one of the things you said before we rolled that you were almost concerned about maybe seeing on camera, but I think Keith is open to all kinds of feedback and I don't think this is that much of an insult, but you were like kind of malt liquor and I, and I, don't, I think you were kind of attributing that to a little bit of that like that grainy clean beer flavor, but clearly with some, with some alcohol, some bump to it, but not like a, roasty stout that has a lot of yeah. covering elements of the yeah. flavors and the character. I mean, I mean what, this isn't unlike... It, it's a high alcohol lager, so also yeah, like yeah, malt is. liquor, but yeah, it's nice. It it's, is nice. It's really nice. It's, um, I know in the whole Headless Mumby tasting, there were some that didn't balance out to my preferences like I like and this one is much more it's pretty much just in there um she pretty strong but it does have all that good Cara Munich and Vienna in mm -hmm. there to help it out help it out I thought the gingerbread cookies that Elsa and Mama's made would be a good pairing because it's like those molasses -y, dark sugar bready um flavors but with the ginger that kind of comes up and over, not only like the maltiness, but the, the hop. It's pretty good. It's almost a little too much though, because that molasses is doing what this beer does, but on like 400 times the scale. Just that really like Munich y caramel -y, but in the case of the molasses, molasses it's kind of literally burnt. burnt almost. Better, yeah. Yeah. And well, this was like a dark, dark. The ginger, the ginger can go with the Chinook. Hey, that was kind of what I was thinking. Oh, no. <laughs> spice on spice. I ate his head. All right, he's headless. First I ate, <laughs> first I ate a chicken, and then I ate his leg. We got to take a picture of that, dude. Uh, the headless was, mummy. I had this ginger brown. Boom, 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 That's what boom, I did. Boom. I didn't think about it, but it was instinctual. So from me and Don, the headless mummy ginger man, shout out to Olympia. Shout out to Keith, Alex, Stacy. Yeah. Thanks for sending. <laughs>